is uh, for companies that are utilizing our EDI integration platform called Vantage Point EDI, the, the upgrade process from Dynamics AX, you know, versions 2012 and before, and um, then going up to Dynamics 365. So before I begin it, I'm just going to give you a quick uh, introduction. I'm Glenn McPeak, and I've been working with Dynamics AX for now um, 17 years. With 13 years of experience integrating data into and out of uh, the Dynamics AX platforms and, and um, Dynamics 365, as well as the uh, Exapta uh, platform, older versions. So um, we've been um, very successful in the AX market, and I think we're an established leader, having been certified for Dynamics AX now for uh, over seven years. So our agenda today is to talk a little bit about Dynamics 365 versus um, AX 2012 and earlier versions. What the what's changed in that when it comes to integration, so that there's some context to uh, let's say some of the opportunities and challenges of migrating from the AX platform up to Dynamics 365. I'm going to talk about our integration architecture, the way that it worked in AX 2012 and prior, and now the changes that we've implemented to support Dynamics 365. I'm going to provide a demonstration of Vantage Point 4, our new version, with Dynamics uh, 365 for operations. So it's going to be an integrated uh, demonstration. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the planning and execution of a 365 um, migration project so that, uh, you know, enables um, you know, our customers that are working with uh, our platform and earlier versions of, of AX uh, to understand what that process is going to look like. And then we're going to open up the floor to um, questions and answers. So the objective is to just communicate information that can be critical for companies that are that have the need for integrated EDI that are on the AX platform that are looking to go to D365. And it applies to both companies that use our system and those that are um, on other systems because there are some um, very similar processes in, in making that migration. Um, part of this is to also um, help uh, with planning of the timeline, you know, with companies that are doing EDI with AX and Exapta and they're looking at uh, D365. There's a lot to be concerned about in terms of the ERP-related um, activities, but if you're a company that needs and, and currently uses integrated EDI, that's an important component of the project and could be a uh, factor in success or, or potential delays. And then finally, um, you know, we want to demonstrate our solution and make sure that um, everyone gets an opportunity to see that. So um, first, what changed in Dynamics 365 versus AX 2012? And this, this pertains specifically to um, the approach to integrating data in and out of D365. So first of all, um, two important integration techniques and, and architectures were removed from AX 2012. First was the application integration framework, which was introduced in AX 4.0 and was, uh, the, generally speaking, the recommended approach to integrating data into and out of um, the Microsoft uh, AX platform. The other integration methodology and um, in architecture was the .NET Business Connector, which existed since the um, very beginning 
um, version 1.0 of, of Dynamics AX, and um, it was reported to be removed uh, for, for many versions, but they kept it through AX 2012 R3. So um, a lot of integrations were built on that platform, and both of them are removed. So, so that's quite significant in terms of change. What they did introduce to replace those two methodologies was a data entity-based framework, which uh, was implemented, first of all, to support the concept of cloud. So neither the uh, .NET Business Connector nor the Application Integration Framework uh, would scale for cloud-based integrations, especially in public cloud. So um, this data entity-based framework was uh, an important component beyond, you know, the new screens that were written in HTML5 and all the other architecture changes. This was uh, a very significant component. And um, <clears throat> another way of loading data into, you know, earlier versions of AX was the uh, DIXF or the um, data import export framework. And that was, um, you know, not built, of course, on entities because they didn't exist, but um, it was a way to get data in and out. And so the DIXF now does work with the new entity framework. So it's, it's reach and ability to be utilized as uh, expanded as well and supports even more complex uh, transactions than in the past. So what's most important is what's the impact of these changes. And what we've seen, you know, as data masons, we've had so many years of experience integrating through the .NET Business Connector, through um, Direct SQL, through uh, as well as using um, the application integration framework. What we found is that the, the REST-based services uh, are inherently superior to the the legacy SOAP-based um, services that was part of the application integration framework. SOAP was brittle, and it um, wasn't that scalable. Uh, what we're seeing with the RESTful web services is much better scalability. The um, authentication methodology uh, that they use is called OAuth, and it's more secure. The, um, the data um, integration format is using JSON, which is a um, rapidly emerging format that's used by many different, um, you know, service-based integrations that you see on the Internet. So this is um, kind of a very mainstream approach, and so they've uh, leveraged that data format as opposed to XML, which was uh, used in the AIF. And it's more efficient, more compact in terms of data um, packages, so it's, uh, it's definitely a, uh, a better approach. And, you know, in terms of impact as, as well as approach and so forth, the ability to touch different parts of uh, Dynamics AX 2012 and earlier versions was relatively limited. You know, when you uh, had the application integration framework coming out of the box, you saw a list of, um, you know, dozens of services that were accessible. But those services were rolled out over a period of 10 years. And so building out those services wasn't something that was particularly easy and certainly not pervasive in the platform. The new data entity framework is much more uh, pervasive and uh, building them out is is easier. Um, so their whole framework made that the ability to talk to virtually any data element within the AX platform using the business logic that, um, that's in there is just much easier to do. Uh, by using web services and OData, uh, the, the, the feedback and the 
information that comes back from the system when doing an integration is, is you know, real time, plus the messages are much more uh, verbose and understandable. So you're getting uh, messages that, that have meaning to, uh, to a lay person. So it's pretty easy to, to troubleshoot um, failed messages when they do occur. And finally, which is uh, ultimately critical, is performance appears to be quite good. Now, in our prior um, architecture in dealing with AX 2012, 2009, and version 4, the way that the integration worked was um, the data that, that sits in vantage point, which is in the middle, was integrated inbound into D365 through application integration framework services. So when we pushed data in, we went through the AI app, and it hit the Dynamics platform. We would draw data back through views into the data um, through SQL Server. So we had SQL views that presented data in the AX platform, and we pulled those views to grab data back so that AX didn't have to be customized to push out data or new um, integration, at, you know, AIF services didn't have to be uh, created. So um, the SQL view served us particularly well. It was fast. The, the presentation of the data was pervasive. It was easy to troubleshoot. And it was easy to be very flexible with them. So um, served us quite well. And, um, you know, we had great success with it. In 365, uh, because it's architected for cloud, all the integration endpoints go through OData. So OData stands for open data. It's a very common uh, approach to web services through, you know, using West, RESTful web services. And um, as I said earlier, uh, Microsoft has delivered a huge number of OData endpoints out of the box with D365 much more so than all the 10 years of building out the AIF. And so we leverage those OData endpoints to get data into D365. And we also use OData to retrieve data back from Dynamics 365. Now, the, the, these endpoint definitions uh, per Microsoft is really a view into the um, Dynamics AX 365 uh, database. So it's an abstraction of a view, an updatable view. So I'm, I'll talk about updatable in a minute, of getting data into and out of um, the D365 platform. So as it turns out, it was very much in line with the approach that we had used in earlier versions of Dynamics AX and served us particularly well. Um, and so it, it fits quite nicely into our, um, our model. So before in, in AX uh, 2012 and earlier, this was what the um, application integration framework service uh, screens looked like. And the use of the SQL views where we were getting data directly out of the system now replaced by um, data entity definitions that reside as a um, extension sitting outside of the core D365, um, you know, logic and so forth. It doesn't add tables. It doesn't add um, um, any sort of business logic to it. It just is, it works like SQL views in a sense in that you can uh, take an existing uh, entity, save it, extend it, change it around, uh, or build some directly from scratch to suit a, a specific purpose. And these um, entities, again, um, are updatable views into the database. So what that means is that they support full uh, create, um, 
update, delete, and read operations for, you know, retrieving data, but also pushing data back into Dynamics 365. So that's part of the key facts to know is that um, there are, um, it provides full CRUD operations against um, the AX database. And again, uses the business logic inside of D365, so you're not, you're not circumventing all the, any customizations that you create or the core business logic. We provide base entities for, to replicate the uh, views that we used in the past. Um, in our database, our outbound maps that, that go out to partners and, and typically represent a huge bulk of the, um, of the maps that most customers use, um, they don't change at all because the data, the underlying data in Vantage Point does not change. So the core uh, data store inside of um, Vantage Point doesn't change. It's just the connections into the Dynamics 365 uh, platform that changes. And so those are relatively minimal compared to everything else. So in a typical deployment, we may only have seven or eight maps that integrate data in and out of the system, but have literally hundreds of maps that support all the different uh, nuances that are required by trading partners in the outside world. So luckily, the, um, the amount of change in the core product uh, is kept to a minimum. Um, it's important to, to note that there's no code to load. That means that there's no customizations in core Dynamics 365. Uh, the project typically boils down to um, just testing to make sure that the, the day that um, our customer goes live, that they're able to produce the same exact result on behalf of their partners that they did on the last day using the, the prior um, version of Dynamics AX. So on Monday, we want the same result that we had on Friday, assuming Monday's the go-live date. Data Masons has tools to accelerate the, the project and testing phase of it, which, as I mentioned, is the biggest part, so we've got you covered. And um, the, the data retrieval process in, in Vantage Point is much more efficient than we used in SQL views. Due to the speed of SQL, we were able to, um, and, and we tended to read records, um, the same records over and over again. In D365, we only read a record one time, and um, so there's no need to um, worry about performance, and, and it's just a much better architecture and design. As far as deployment options for Vantage Point, um, we have a uh, cloud that is fully managed by data masons and will integrate into D365 regardless of the deployment methodology. So D365 um, it primarily is deployed in the Microsoft Public Cloud, so of course our cloud interacts with um, the Microsoft Public Cloud quite uh, nicely, but it also um, will work with the on-premise version of Dynamics 365 from the Data Masons Cloud. You can deploy Vantage Point in the Azure Private Cloud, so that means Azure's um, platform managed by the end user or by a uh, third-party provider like a SaaS Plaza or any, you know, hosting options. So if you had your, you decide you want to deploy on, on Rackspace or some other, or Amazon, you can do that with Vantage Point. And then finally, uh, the solution is uh, still deployable on-premise, so you can have the system run in your own data center. So what I'm going to do now is take you through a demonstration of Vantage Point. And for those uh, 
folks that are on the call today that has worked with our legacy version, if you're looking at um, this screen, you're, you're seeing something that's radically different. So we've really changed the user experience as part of um, the upgrade of our platform that is required for Dynamics 365. So what you're looking at is Vantage Point 4, and it is the um, version that supports integration with Dynamics 365. What you'll notice here on the left side of the screen is we have um, flow menus that represent the most common business processes that our customers implement. And it's, um, it's quite holistic, meaning it follows business transaction process flows like quote to cash, quote to pay, which would be supplier facing um, EDI activities, logistics and transportation, dealing with the different uh, methods of transporting freight, receiving freight, uh, sending freight, uh, full public warehouse support. All the functionality that existed in 2012 is all here. It's just now presented in a uh, an easy to follow lo logical um, format. Um, there's a now a new automotive planning and execution screen and product management here on the side. We also now let the user create their own user experience so you can build out a favorites area. Um, the security has changed. There's a new roles-based security that enables um, the administrator to set the user experience based on the user's role and, um, and give them a very easy to follow, easy to use uh, system. You can remove all the menu bars. You can remove all the menus across the top if you wish and just leave it to uh, only the this favorites area where the user can group and organize their functions uh, in a way that makes sense for them. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up what we call our EDI workflow scheduler for those customers that currently uh, use our platform today. Uh, this is radically different from what um, you've used in the past. It's accessible as a client directly from uh, Vantage Point. So all users have the ability to, to go in and, and, depending on security, view what the status is or be able to change the status of transactions or have full access to, to change and update workflows. So workflow um, is something along the lines of a series of tasks. So for example, I have a PO workflow inbound process. That process has a series of tasks that are executed based on a schedule. In my case, it executes once when I start up the system, and it performs a series of tasks. The first step would be to go and get data from the outside world, so download from a uh, network mailbox as an example. The send PO to Dynamics 365 creates a, um, in my case, a sales order in D365, and then there's this uh, purchase order changes, et cetera. What I'm going to do is start up the scheduler, and it's going to start firing processes. And we'll see data going in and out of Dynamics 365 in a moment. And what I'm going to do is get into Dynamics 365. And what we have is the um, sales order grid, the NAX 365. You can see the most current sales order is 895. And so what I'm going to expect after I start up the scheduler is to see an order 896 get created. So I just hit the play button, which starts up the workflow scheduler, and the workflow scheduler is normally working 24-7, so you would you just set it and, and it runs. 
if you're in our cloud, it, it will always be running, except for at times that we that there's uh, scheduled maintenance. And so what's happening is that there are a number of processes that are executing, including our PO workflow inbound process, which just ran and completed. So what it did was it downloaded a, a purchase order. And I can see that in Vantage Point in Documents Received. If I come over here to my favorites and I look at Documents Received, you'll see that a purchase order was just downloaded. Uh, it's called Upgrade Webinar 2. The time is 11.34. My current local time is 11.35, so you can see it happened uh, just a moment ago. I'm receiving email notifications from Outlook because Part of um, the automation is distribution of inbound document and reports and so forth. So it's uh, just letting me know that things are happening, that I'm getting um, notified right away when, when events occur. But most importantly, coming back to the uh, Dynamics 365 screen, if I hit the refresh button, You should see a new sales order, and I do 896. So here's the order that was just created by Vantage Point through the um, workflow scheduler. So the upgrade webinar 2 has been downloaded and integrated into D365. So it's just a simple order with one line. Now, one of the great um, opportunities that we have now with D365 and with, um, with you know, Vantage Point 4 platform is the ability to open up links and get back to data from, from Vantage Point. So this link opens up a screen that is displaying data that isn't necessarily loaded into the AX platform. These are extraneous data elements that don't really have a home in Dynamics 365, but they're visible from Dynamics 365 through APIs and reading back data from our, um, from our platform. So that's just the display only. And we also have um, this link, which brings us to what we call our transaction lifecycle screen. So what that's doing is it's retrieving a transaction, and I, in my case, this is a purchase order, and um, but it could be any transaction. It can be a cash application. It could be a uh, invoice. It could be a ship notice. Uh, whatever the uh, transaction in, in Dynamics that's related to that particular uh, life cycle. So in my case, I'm going to do a, a purchase order to invoice process. So I'm going to, I already downloaded and integrated a purchase order, um, created a sales order, and so we see one transaction here in this screen. And one nice thing is that you can get right to the data that came in. So this is the actual data that was imported by Vantage Point. And you can see it's relatively sparse in terms of information, but Vantage Point, our platform, transforms that information into a viable transaction that's integrated through the OData and Data Entity Framework. So what I'm going to do is um, process some transactions, and we'll come back to the, uh, to the transaction lifecycle Explorer. So the first thing I'm going to do is generate a um, sales order confirmation. And of course, if I've made changes to the order, so for example, change the delivery date, change the price, change the quantity, that information is retrieved back into Vantage Point, and the acknowledgement is built according to the partner's requirements so that we're sending the right codes, the right values, and the right format following their rules 
uh, based on the changes that were made here in Dynamics 365. I'm doing a simple confirmation. Everything's fine. I'm going to do a simple shipment, which is uh, just a packing slip update. And that's going to trigger a ship notice out to my trading partner, which is either known, you know, commonly known as a uh, advanced ship notice or dispatch advice, which is just advising the customer that these goods are now on the way. Now, is my scheduler configured to uh, send that out? Right now, it's 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 being sent every minute, so. Uh, within 60 seconds from posting, a transaction is going to be retrieved and transmitted to the trading partner. Uh, your team is in control of the frequency, so you set the frequency that you want to send this out. And that's assuming that you even want to automate it. You don't have to automate the process. Finally, I'm going to generate an invoice. And this time I'm going to generate the invoice to the screen. So that we can see the invoice, see the invoice number assigned, and tie that back to the um, transaction lifecycle explorer screen. So as you can see, we generated a invoice number CIV 0007740. So seven seven four, the invoice number. It's easiest to remember. And now when I come back to the transaction lifecycle screen, we're starting to see more data in here. So originally I had just the purchase order. Now I have a transaction here. Um, for the purchase order acknowledgement, POA. That's what POA stands for. And again, I can get to the actual live data. So this is the data that was generated back to the trading partner from the confirmation journal. And you'll notice in the status column, we've got a status here of, of checked. So that means that the that this acknowledgement has a occurred and then delivered back to the trading partner. This icon indicates that we're waiting for a functional acknowledgement back from the trading partner, basically a message that says, hey, we received this transaction. And this is very important in reconciling the business uh, interactions that is afforded to you through a an electronic e-commerce integrated uh, transaction process. So um, you get all this information right here on the screen, which is uh, quite nice. And what I'm going to uh, do is, is I'm just going to refresh this screen because the workflow scheduler is continuing to, to do work and to um, send and receive data. So now we see a, a new transaction is showing up here. Um, the invoice transaction, and you'll notice that the reference value is this uh, invoice number 774, and here's the data. So all this visible from within Dynamics 365, but without having to um, <clears throat> customize the system to have all this data in there, because now it's interacting through the um, through the cloud. And let's see if the shipment the shipment data just showed up. Oops. Maybe just a moment. In a moment or two I'll have access to the uh, to the actual raw shipment. So my final slide before the Q&A is just to talk a little bit about the uh, deployment and upgrade process. So for a company that's currently using Vantage Point uh, with uh, AX2012 or earlier, 
there's a process that, that we should follow together. Um, the first is to make a request <clears throat> to scope out the, the upgrade process so that we can estimate the effort for the, the upgrade. Now, from a software licensing standpoint and maps, that's all included in your, um, in your maintenance and support invoice, but uh, it should be expected that there will be some services to, um, to upgrade the uh, vantage point platform, configure it for communication with uh, Dynamics 365, and there should be some assistance in terms of helping <clears throat> adapt uh, entities to any customizations that you decide to carry forward into Dynamics 365. I think most companies that are making that migration evaluate <clears throat> what they've done in, in AX, look at the new opportunities for uh, <clears throat> handling the same processes, but maybe with native functionality or, or taking a different approach to, um, to how customizations are done. So this is where um, this analysis phase come, comes into play so that we can help uh, with that. So the, um, based on that analysis, we'll help build out the uh, entities and, and test them. Of course, your team can do all the work if you like, but uh, we offer that um, for assistance. And we'll make sure that your team is trained on the new VP4 platform so that you're um, comfortable with that platform, you know, compared to uh, BP 2012. And then we offer the ability to do testing and training um, as part of your team, if you wish. So we'll actually do full process cycles testing um, to make sure that, as I said earlier, that we get the same result when you go live as you did prior to um, the transition to Dynamics 365 and vantage point four. Um, and then we'll assist you with your go-live process, and then, of course, monitor and, um, and, and support you as we've done in the past with Dynamics, uh, I mean, with AX 2012 and earlier versions. So with that, I'd like to open up the floor to uh, any questions that that folks might have. So um, I appreciate everyone's uh, time and attention today, and, and hopefully if you have questions, uh, I'm able to answer them. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll jump in here. Thank you, Glenn. Um, good afternoon, everybody. It's Dennis Bruce from Data Masons. I'm gonna, um, if you have a question, please use the Q&A uh, functionality within uh, WebEx. WebEx. You'll see it up, uh, should be in the top right-hand corner. You'll see the Q&A button. You can ask your question from there, um, and that will come directly to us, and we'll be able to stack them up. Uh, Glenn, we've got a couple of questions that are already in the queue, so uh, let me just kind of go through some of them. Uh, first one, can we upgrade Vantage Point 4 prior to the migration of Dynamics 365? The answer is yes. So Vantage Point 4 works with uh, well, any version of um, Dynamics AX 2012, 2009, 4.0, 3.0, and, and even 2.5. Okay, perfect. Um, next one, uh, the views. You, you talked about the views before that are used for 2012 and all the versions before 365. Um, can they be used with Dynamics 365? Um, that's an interesting question. Um, <clears throat> so our approach is to use OData throughout, and I think that's best practice. However, uh, Microsoft now <clears throat> offers the option of of local um, deployment, you know, on premise. So if you so if you wish to do it that way, it would be possible. But um, generally speaking, we we suggest using OData endpoints. Um, okay. Uh, follow up to that. Um, there's a lot of logic in, in their views, and um, so we're going forward. If the views are not available, where will that logic then be reflected? So the logic is either handled in 
the entity. Now, there's limitations with what can be done with entities versus a, a, a SQL view. But um, we also can put all that logic into the, uh, <clears throat> the map that gets, that reads the data from the views. So we, um, we grab all the data that we're interested in and then we can manipulate it in the map as it's being written to the vantage point database. So, um, <clears throat> so basically all the logic that you have in SQL can be replicated in the, by the entity and then what we call the get map, which means getting data back from Dynamics 365. Okay. Um, all right, so next question. Um, there, someone has a distribution system that is separate from AX. Shipping information comes back into AX into custom tables. This data is needed for ASNs and invoicing. Would we have to customize Vantage Point to get this data? The answer is no. If the data exists in the Dynamics 365 database, the uh, entities can be adapted to those data stores, similar to what we used to do with our um, SQL views. So if the data exists in the database, or even in a separate database, we could grab, gather all the data together. In D365, if the data exists in the uh, D365 database, um, the entity just needs to be created somewhere to a SQL view. Okay, great, great. Um, so if somebody is going from the, uh, from Vantage Point to, or Vantage Point 2012, I guess, up to Vantage Point 4 and D365. From a, from a data masons perspective, the, are there any licensing issues that they need to deal with? There shouldn't be. So as long as the uh, documents aren't changing, there's no licensing impact. Okay. It's part of your maintenance. Okay. Perfect. Um, is Data entity support collection while using as web server is uh, the question is I'll read it just as is is data entity support collection or does it support collection while using web services? Um, I'm not sure I understand um, the meaning of collection. So the way that the entity the entities work is. Um, <clears throat> And I, I didn't go into the details of the different types of entities because, it, you know, there's concept of data entities and then composite entities that have um, the ability to see more data across more tables and so forth. So the way that um, we approach the, the integration process is we talk to um, the smaller uh, what's called single data entities, which are all accessible through OData. And we pull the data back um, individually. So if we had a uh, entity that needed information from different parts of the system, which I'm assuming is what the collection question means, we would have calls that would grab that data individually from uh, where they reside, gather it together in memory, and then write it as one complete transaction. We also, though, have the ability to read the uh, composite entities. Um, composite entities are intended, were designed for read-only access through um, OData. Uh, it's really just, you know, I think intended for BI systems like Power BI, but it, it basically makes them readable by external systems like Vantage Point. So that's another way to get uh, complex transactions out of um, Dynamics uh, okay. 365. Got it. All right, uh, next and, question. Uh, you, Oops, I, go ahead. you can email that question if there's follow-up to dmsales at datamaintenance.com and we will make sure you get the answer. Okay, great. Uh, next question, uh, this one's about consolidated ASNs. So we have a customer that can sometimes send us two or more orders that are processed and invoiced separately. However, they want them mm -hmm. shipped on the same truck. We have uh, 
So these guys have a complex customization AX to generate a combined ASN that's required by the customer. Can Vantage Point take two separate orders and create a combined ASN? Well, the answer is absolutely. So it's two separate shipments would probably be the more accurate term. And um, as long as they share a common thread, like a bill of lading number, uh, the way that we read the data, we just focus on that value and pull the data together into one transaction. And of course, uh, we support consolidated ASNs. I mean, that's, that's core functionality. So it's just a matter of getting the, um, reading the data together through this common um, value. It wouldn't even have to be the bill lading number uh, because of flexibility of the entities. We could focus on some other value that, that kind of joins them together. But, um, uh, but essentially the answer is yes, and there's no customization required whatsoever. Okay, perfect. Um, you showed the uh, transaction lifecycle in um, Explorer. Um, someone wants to know if that is available for VP 2012 or is it just um, VP 4? It, it, well, it's for VP 4, but it does work with, um, you know, any version of uh, ERP. So if you're on any ERP platform, the, the Transaction Lifecycle Explorer are, is accessible from within Vantage Point. So if I went to those transactions in Vantage Point, um, so for example, Document Explorer, and if I have a transaction like this one, I click on it, and it'll open up a TLE geared towards that transaction. Okay, um, uh, we're, we're right up against the hour. I do not see any more questions. Um, just so everybody knows, this webinar will be recorded, um, or has been recorded, and um, that recording will go out to all attendees in case you need to be, uh, want to share this with someone else within your organization. Um, otherwise than that, um, Jason, gonna, um, or Glenn, I'm sorry, do you have anything else you want to um, say? No, I just thank everybody for their time today, and um, I apologize for the late start, but uh, hopefully there was value in the presentation. Okay. All right, everybody, contact information is up on the screen. If you have any follow-up questions, especially um, on the ones that we've just uh, answered for you, if you need a little more clarification, as you see, DM sales at datamasons.com. Uh, both myself and Glenn are on that email um, thread, and we'll be able to uh, get back to you in a timely fashion. Thank you very much for attending. Um, and as Glenn mentioned, sorry about the slight uh, delay in the start, but otherwise we get everything in within the hour. So appreciate it. Everybody have a great day. Thank you.